So, uh, hello everybody at Awards. Um, really happy to be here and we would love to tell you a little bit about fusing code and celluloid. Uh, it's something we're really fond of. It took us quite some time. Uh, they both exist now for a couple of decades, or actually the film part does, but the digital is rather new. So, combining those two is quite a challenge because you have two different crews two different types of working, and we want to uh, enlighten you on how we succeeded on getting them closer, closer together. So, but first, we are Media Monks. We had a little bit of an introduction. Um, we call ourselves <laughs> the biggest production, the biggest creative digital production agency of the planet. Boom, modesty slide. <laughs> this is our American slide. I don't know if any Americans are here, but in America they like to hear this, uh, these type of things. Um, we do like to show what we do via our mixtape, so let's start with that. Yes, there you go. Don't let them out! You're my baby! What else can you do? Coyote penis bone. And I'm like, what is this? He's like, you ain't really calling my mother. He turns around and looks at me. And he says, dude, there's a horse in the bar. <laughs> I can't begin to tell you. <laughs> Just give me a try. Probably the loudest show reel ever, yeah. Thank you. So then, uh, a little introduction, but that was already being told, is my name is Jeroen van der Meer. I work at Media Monks for over seven years. They call me the Executive Creative Director. Standing here together with my colleague, Vincent van der Wetering. It's a hybrid guy, illustrator, animator, banner boy once. CD from our UK office, and these days he's helping me out on the... Uh, HQ office. Yes, and some of you might be thinking uh, creative directors at a production company, what the hell. Um, let's explain a little bit about how we work and that will put everything into perspective that we're going to say next about fusing film and digital. So we like to say we're a creative digital production company. What does that mean, creative? Well, um, it all starts still with the ad agency and their creative team setting out the idea, they come to us to help out with the digital execution, um, and we attach a Media Monks creative director 
And in most cases, you'll see in the presentation today, there will be a Mediamonks Films film director involved. Now, um, if there's any potential clients out there, don't be scared by the term creative director. We won't try to take your job. Uh, just think of interactive director, because we're not here to take all the work. We're here to help you create a pr perfect project. And this sort of trilogy of these three forces working together creates award-winning projects. I can do it again if you guys want to. Oh, effects, boom, and flip, swish. And that's the gospel according to Wesley Terhaar, our uh, CEO and bearded mascot. All right, all right, cool. Um, so by working on hands-on with these film directors and these uh, client-side creative directors, uh, we go to all sorts of locations, uh, point at things, and look concerned at monitors. So fusing code and celluloid, let's talk about the mix and how we in the end mix up the two digital um, with film. Um, that being said, you have the clicker. I don't. You don't have the clicker? No clicker. Who does click? Manual clicker. The man there? Oh, okay. Then I'll click. So why fuse code and celluloid at all? Um, it's a logical question. Uh, some very natural reasons for that. We'll tell you more about that later, and a few business necessities dictating this fusion as well. So the first one is actually the budgets are moving. So we used to sit in a little green screen cubicle at our own office, low budget, um, couldn't do really good stuff. Then we focused on the, the higher film quality. It's a place where more budgets are. Combine that with the two and you can do great stuff. The next point, of course, is, dare we say it, it's more engaging. It's not scrolling through a Facebook website or a Facebook page or anything like that, but we're really trying to tell a story via an animation or a film. And then also a very important thing is that film brings that human element in it. So since the Stone Age, we have been trained to feel confident with that, we can bond with a human with their expressions and uh, that really helps us uh, to, to, uh, yeah, to tell the story actually. Then another very positive thing, as we are quite uh, geeks, I can tell you that the right side on this is uh, a lot more tangible for clients and agencies than the left side. So working with flows was more of a problem than actually working with storyboards, um, although Don looks a little bit confused in this one. <laughs> so, our journey. Uh, the the Made Monk's journey actually through uh, the, the, the code and celluloid phase. Um, I'll, I'll take you through it slowly and we'll show you what we have learned uh, along the way. Not to forget, yeah. uh, when we were making this uh, thing actually, we came at a point where we completely contradict ourselves. That's actually because of a client wanted something that felt a little bit more like 1999, but we'll show you that later. So let's step into the first era, and that was actually the silent era. The era where we were the second crew standing there on set waiting for hours, and actually we once waited for seven days until the whole TVC crew, so the first uh, crew, went off for a leak breakfast or they were just done to take that little shot of interactivity that really nobody cared about. Um, looking at those days and the people and the actors, uh, most of you will not know this guy, it's Hans van der Tocht, it's a famous <laughs> Dutch guy, great man. He's feeling it, I can see it. But um, we also ended up in situations where we needed to wait, but we also needed the actor, so the actor needed to again, do the whole thing over and spend extra hours. So there was also a little bit of tension going on back then. Yeah, so what pulled us out of that phase, out of that green screen cubicle and into the stuff you saw in the showreel? Um, it's a phase we call the, the personalization phase. So, um, if you please. Uh, let's do a little math. So it was 2011, Flash, plus Facebook, minus modern-day cell phones, equals peak personalization. 
There was this phase where we make a lot of uh, film projects with uh, stuff in it. Basically, paste your face, in a nutshell. Now, uh, we're going to have a little look at what that face looked like, and of course, it looks a little dated now, but you have to imagine uh, those were great days for us. We had some really fun projects and we did some really cool things. So let's have a look again with the help of Wesley. One more. Oh, there he is, once again. As you can see, uh, we did a lot of this stuff, basically done it to death. Uh, went a little bit out of hand, but if there's any uh, people in the audience that had one of those lovely projects we did, it was great projects to work on. Um, we did find new ways to make it interesting. Um, for instance, this is a, someone's Facebook profile picture as a tattoo, integrated in video for a Desperados campaign. So this moved and warped to the way her shoulder moved. Uh, technically very interesting to do back then. And uh, that way we kept it fresh. We keep, kept sort of reinventing it. Another great thing uh, back in those days was adding choice to the mix. It's another way to make a video more interactive, more personal. Go left, go right. And you know, it's a great storytelling tool. Technically, it's basically play video one or play video two. But it's a cool way to add some interactivity. And like the personalization stuff, we went on and on and on to uh, further improve it like this. You know, it's really nice WebGL projection mapping stuff for uh, this Adidas campaign. Um, it's basically still go left, go right, but nicely done. Um, great project. Sky was the limit. We even sent somebody to space, I believe. Did he actually go, you know? Um, I don't know. No? I saw a winner coming one, out. One-way trip, maybe. Maybe he went there uh, and didn't come back. I don't know. <laughs> so the plot twist. Yes. What happened? What happened after this phase of uh, peak presentation? I see that platforms. Nice. Something very scary happened in the digital landscape. You see um, the film attachment in here? It's <laughs> deep thinking. <laughs> so. So what happened? First of all, Flash sort of died. Then Facebook changed their API regulations. We couldn't get to the content in the same way we used to. Uh, we couldn't rely on that. Mobile lives and thrives. Like, so no longer were people just looking at digital desktop experiences. They were looking at mobile digital experiences as well. Video advertising grows, and we saw a lot of segregation. We saw more types of videos for more types of target audiences, and no longer just one video with uh, your face pasted in it and making it as uh, accessible to a broad audience as possible, but more focused. So right. that led us to this. So now we come into our uh, second wave of code and celluloid. And actually what we want to showcase is three hybrids. This is what we started to do back then. And the first hybrid is actually a film content on a digital platform. It's actually the closest to regular film. Uh, there, doesn't, there is not any type of interaction uh, that comes to it. So the, tech, uh, the second version is really about um, an optional version. You can choose to see the whole film or you make the decision to go in a deep dive and see more content. And then the third version is really the user being on the director's seat and taking charge of the scenery himself. So actually the furthest removed from film or, or is, is it? it? Mm. <laughs> So, let's have a look. Seven Days of Rain, one of our cases really proud of and a very good example of co content being in a uh, filmish content in being in a digital uh, uh, environment. Uh, it's a project that we did together with SMFB and Geox. Um, so let's have a look. So, to test their line of waterproof and breathable shoes, the guys over at Geox flew me in for this next level high-tech experiment, getting soaked in the rain for seven days straight. Now who wouldn't want that? The point of the experiment was to test the shoes in a rainy urban environment, so every day they had laid out a different activity. Alright, let's go. To make sure the rain was constantly pouring, 
The team created multiple rain devices. Next to a portable plow, which you can see here, they had a car following me around. Yeah, this one. Ah, oh, and to really top things off, they had an octocopter. Really? All seven episodes of the interactive documentary could be seen on the Geox Amphibiox website. Working smoothly? You could watch extra making of material. There you go. And also see how the shoes handle the conditions. Up oh, really close. Look at that beautiful foot acting, by the way. Geox made sure people across all devices were able to experience the site in crisp detail. As for the results, well, it looks like people are enjoying my struggle all over the world. Very nice. You know, going through these seven days of rain was a wet and crazy experience. The tests were intense, but I made it, and I wouldn't have missed it for the world. So, technically a very um, traditional film project. Everything in there is covered with drama, comedy, a typical boy meets girl love story, and of course the waterproof shoes that always stayed dry. Um, so in this case, it's not about you, it's actually about somebody that's totally not, oh, am I going too fast? Yes, this is about someone who's not you. So this is something totally different. So after the stage where we had a lot of place your face on top of things, um, we go into a more documentary type of platform where we made great video uh, with a lot of emotion, but there was, um, everything was steered by us. Um, so there was no choice for the user except for the fact that we made that choice for you uh, during the, uh, the editing suite. Um, so a good example, I think, of a 100% digital platform, uh, yet the film themselves are completely, hardly interactive at all. So then, uh, looking at our fusion in this one, uh, between code and celluloid, um, what we have is the form and format. We have the distribution, so this was not only living at a digital platform, but we also spread it widely on Facebook, YouTube, etc. Uh, the platform itself, and then on the celluloid, the film side, you had the dramatic stories that in, uh, told in the best way possible, without any choice of going into a different direction, and about, uh, um, about a, a variety. variety of people. <laughs> so not about you. <laughs> Thanks, Vincent, for that lovely work. Yeah, so quite the obvious of the peak personalization phase, you might say. Yeah. Boom. Then uh, our next example in our, uh, uh, not a struggle, but adventure in uh, code and celluloid is the Weber Barbecue Cultures uh, campaign that we released a couple of months ago. Um, it's a nice example of something where the user can actually choose with either watch the whole film or at a certain moment dive in deeper into rabbit holes and find out certain stuff about the brand and uh, also the cultures that play in this uh, example. Let's have a look. We all love to barbecue. And when you love to barbecue, there's one thing you want. More barbecue. For the 2015 barbecue season, Weber decided to give their grill enthusiasts more barbecue stuff than you can shake your spatula at. In this immersive digital experience, we invite our grillers on a journey through barbecue cultures across the world to discover, to learn, to be inspired. Through cinematic and interactive content, using film, animations, split screens and cinema graphs, we join barbecues we might never have had the chance to experience. We learn everything from how to choose the right piece of meat, to the importance of timing, keeping your knives razor sharp, and smoking a Norwegian salmon. The multitude of barbecue content makes this a rich and delicious journey. Every piece of content had to be useful and shareable, with each chapter having a specific mission to entertain, educate, and showcase Weber's amazing barbecue range, deepening our visitors' relationship not only with Weber, but barbecue culture in general.
The campaign site was backed by a huge social media presence, as every single piece of content was made shareable across Facebook and Twitter. Additional bite-sized content was also seeded to drive traffic towards both the laptop and mobile experience. Whether you love barbecues, for the gadgets, for the food, for the passion, for the fire, or for the friends, this hybrid digital experience lets you dive in and immerse yourself completely in the amazing thing that is barbecue. So, <clears throat> so what does uh, film bring to the barbecue party? Of course, the first thing, very important, we talked about that already, is that human element, something that we can relate with and yeah, yeah, maybe also get a little bit jealous with something that we, uh, we want to enjoy ourselves. Then the food porn. Uh, for me, a totally different world. I noticed that you need to do it with real food, otherwise it's really hard to fake it, my personal experience. And then the, the food for thought. So actually the little learnings that we gave people. And in every deep dive they went into, they figured out how to clean their barbecue in the best way, but also how to prepare their meat, or in this case, how to roast their meat. So looking at this uh, fusion between code and celluloid, we have on the code side, we have that digital first. So the platform that we structured and made it possible to, to interact. The deep dives and all the disciplines. So it's covered with illustrations, animations, 3D, 2D, etc. Then looking at the celluloid, the human element, the food porn, and of course the food for thought. Um, really a good project where we all went, side note, to South Africa to showcase all these different cultures because it was actually based upon five cultures in Europe, um, but South Africa has them all. Uh, so that was a, a fun fact, but um, important to be there as a creative team, but also as a film team working together. So the third and, and final sort of, of these hybrids we've been talking about is this uh, 360 and uh, 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 VR environment stuff that we've been doing nowadays. So what we're going to look at is the Johnny Walker project, the Symphony in Blue, which we made for Iris Singapore. It was a, a digital uh, whiskey tasting experience, so you were encouraged to drink while you were going through the experience. I'm sure that helps. Um, we'll have a little look and then we'll dive deep into what it has, has to do with film. How did we use film in this project? Why is this in this presentation about code and celluloid? Um, we used actual film where it mattered, so real people, uh, transitional scenes where it was needed, and atmospheric shots like these nice little cobblestones in uh, Latvia, I believe. Um, so these were shot to, to, to enrich the experience, but the main experience was still the 360 digital landscapes. Um, so that brings us to the question, like, if viewers become participants, if they're in control, is it still a film? Are, are we still making film if you as a user are a director? You're moving the camera around, you're triggering what happens next. Uh, how does that work? Well, we found that we used our film techniques that we've learned from our other projects to build this digital world. So we did some real location uh, scouting. The, the people from Johnny Walker were very... Uh, welcoming and gave us a lot of access to their archives to get all the details right. And uh, we did this sort of digital set building thing that you can see here in the background. Um, through doing that, we had control over uh, the shots that, were people going, that people were going to see. They could move the camera 
anywhere. Therefore, the shot could be anything. Uh, you have to make sure that in every area there is a shot, if you will. So if you look at the mix of, of code and celluloid, it's a tablet first, 360. Oh, sorry about the audio. Uh, it's a tablet first, 360 experience uh, with full immersion thanks to the binaural audio and stuff like that. And we used film where it really mattered. Atmospheric shots, real people, actors, dancers, stuff like that. And we used the film techniques that we've learned to build this digital world. Now that is a nice segue into what's on everybody's minds, VR. Now, this is our current day. This is where it's gone. Uh, we're making a lot of these productions, a lot of this VR stuff, working with uh, Google Cardboard, Oculus Rift, uh, HoloLens, Magic Leap, all those guys. And um, again, it's, it's kind of like filmmaking, but in a very scary sense. You have to sort of give the control away to the user, because they're determining what you see. Um, we have a nice little one last case video of, of what that looks like with somebody's in the middle of the action. It's a project from Chrysler. A huge part of this car was the factory in uh, Sterling Heights. The biggest thing that we wanted to do is somehow take the customer there and show them this, this fantastic world-class factory and the people that are building it in the most innovative way we could. Using virtual reality experience technology, for the first time, we're able to show users a view of the car that they've never been able to see before. Wow. The car flies apart. The doors fly away, the hood flies away, the engine lifts up. And people are actually able to interact with these parts that they would otherwise never see. So you get inside a manufacturing facility from a 3D standpoint and you can actually look around what we do, how we do it, the precision that we make this car with, and the amount of robotics that goes on. Well, the quality in this car gets way into things that you normally don't see on the showroom floor, right? It's built into the very seams and welds that are on this car, and that's what you're going to see in this cool Oculus display. So cool! Nice. Yeah. <laughs> So to do a little recap about the uh, three hybrids we just uh, showed you guys is that the first one is really the film content based in a digital platform. It's there for you. It's more documentary. You can watch it whenever you want. There is no um, obligation for interaction whatsoever. Then the second one is really to seduce and interact. So it's a linear storyline, but we try to pull you in into the deep dives and learn you a little bit more about the cooking and all that comes with it. And then the last one, the 360 experience and VR is of course something that is, um, yeah, there's a lot going on around that topic and we're trying to, uh, to pay uh, lots of attention to what is the, the aspect of uh, the, the, the platform, so the medium actually. You need to have something everywhere. So yep. it's a really uh, interesting uh, uh, working field. But <laughs> there's always just random stuff. There's always a case that proves that doesn't fit in any of the boxes and just weird. Yeah, this is, is our, our contradiction. Um, now, nah, let's have a look. <laughs> Click to explore my muscle! Yeah, so this is, a, this is a project we did for White and Candy Portland for, for Old Spice. Uh, luckily, there's still clients who just don't want to do weird shit. That has n they don't care about what technology, what method. They just want to do fun stuff. And luckily, we won't want to do fun stuff too. Um, <laughs> crazy tight deadline, really cool project. Uh, a lot of video in Flash. And the funny thing is that uh, two weeks after we launched this project, uh, Chrome pulled the support for Flash. So in a way, it's this, the swan song of Flash. 
Uh, so we keep and we were really honored. A moment honored. of silence. Huh? A moment of silence. A moment of silence for Flash. <laughs> Did we do it? <laughs> <laughs> now, we were honored that we got to make it. And uh, with that, we leave you. Thank you very much for your attention. And Thanks. we'll see you at the bar. Thank you, Lydia.